A vintage model traction engine restoration part 3. Rust removal, painting and the water pump. This is the drive plate that actually drives the rear wheel. Behind this plate is the differential gear system. And thankfully that seems to be fine, so I don't need to go any further. I don't need to remove this plate. This is a cast iron plate and it's very rusty, so I'm going to use my Proxon angle grinder fitted with a flapper wheel to remove the rust. This video clip is running at four times normal speed, 400%. It's a quick lesson in how not to slip into a coma when watching one of my videos. This Proxon motor tool, which is battery operated, is absolutely excellent. It will take cutting discs and other kinds of discs, but I find the flapper wheel discs to be the most efficient for doing jobs like this. By rotating the large gear whilst holding the motor tool against the edge of this plate made it very easy to remove the rust. And besides the edge of this plate wasn't machined, it was just rough cast iron. So by using this brilliant tool it even made the edge smooth. Some of the rust on the front face was quite deep, so I went over it again. And finally it's now time to paint the part using some etch primer. I'm not going to spray it, I'm going to use a paintbrush. The paint is out of an aerosol can though and it's quite thin, but etch primer does not need to be applied thickly. Once again I found the painting process easier by rotating the big wheel. The rust removal and repainting of this part took quite a while, but now the video is running at 800%, 8 times normal speed. And as usual here is the gratuitous shot of the paint drying. No more painting until after 24 hours has elapsed to make sure that the etch primer has done its job and dried. This clip shows the full gear train and very nicely made it is too. The owner of the engine mentioned that the water pump leaked badly. So I think in this episode I'm going to give the water pump the attention that it deserves, starting with removing the top part of the eccentric strap. The two pieces of studding on this eccentric are a bit strange. One is screwed in level with the bottom eccentric strap, and the other piece of studding sticks out halfway at each side. I think it will look better if the studding sticks out equally at both sides. I'll cover that when I refit the eccentric. Being very gentle and with a very small sharp pointed screwdriver, I release the top part of the eccentric from the bottom part. The eccentric sheave, that's the cast iron part, was a bit loose on the shaft. It's held in place by a slotted grub screw. Once I slackened off the grub screw, I could slide the eccentric sheave off the crankshaft. Before I refit the eccentric strap, I'm going to clean it up. I'm not going to polish it though, I'm just going to clean it up so at least it's not dirty. The next part of the job is to remove the water pump. The pump is secured to the side plate with a long stud in the centre of the body, and also a small brass bolt. The piece of brass packing behind it is a bit of a mess, so I may clean this up before I refit it. Here I'm removing the bottom pipe, which is the one that connects to the water tank. This is the water inlet to the pump. The next thing I have to do is remove the stud, and I'm going to use a special pair of pliers that I have. I could put a pair of lock nuts on the stud and remove it that way, but the pliers method is quicker, and this pair of pliers has a very gentle set of markings on the inner jaws. I don't recommend using pliers for this job, but these are okay. Now the only thing that's holding the water pump is the piece of pipe connected to it. In another episode I'll be giving this piping a bit of attention. But what I'm concerned with at the moment is the gland packing of the ram on the pump. As you can see I previously removed the ram and now I'm removing the two nuts that hold the gland onto the main body of the pump. Parts of this traction engine, in a previous attempt at dismantling it and rebuilding it, have become mixed up. These nuts are too small for the gland. I think I'll discard them and fit some more later. This is what it looks like with the top part of the gland removed. I poked out all of the old gland packing material, and yes, it wasn't very flexible, it was getting quite hard. Plus I thought I'd take this opportunity, after I've cleaned up the pump, to try a different method. The cylinder of the pump is very short, and the ram isn't fitted with an o-ring. Most of the sealing takes place by the graphited yarn wrapped around the ram and held in place by the top part of the gland. Before I continue, I'm giving the thing a squirt with some WD-40. 
especially down the end of the ram, just to get the old oil out of there. As you can see, there isn't an o-ring fitted to the ram. Time now to clean up the eccentric strap and the eccentric rod. I'm using panel wipe for this and my elliptic toothbrush. That gets the bulk of the grime off the eccentric straps. I will also clean these parts using some Scotch-Brite. I do not want to polish them because they will not match any of the other parts of the engine. I'm cleaning up the top part of the eccentric underneath using some sandpaper and some WD-40. I just want to make sure that the surface is flat and I'm finishing it off using a piece of cloth. Instead of graphited yarn packings, I'm going to try using some O-rings. At the moment I have three on the ram, but I think I may need to fit a couple more. So I put two more on and it was obvious that that was too much. So the number shall be four. The number three is too diminutive and it shall not be the number five. Yes, four O-rings is definitely the number and now they're all fitted in place and you will notice that I've used brass nuts on the top of the gland. Two of these were from the eccentric strap and the other two were from my box of small 4BA brass lock nuts. Two reasons for doing this, the other nuts I thought were too small, plus they were made of steel, and therefore they were very rusty. This is the grub screw that holds the eccentric sheave onto the crankshaft. I really don't want to reuse this. If I tighten this to hold the sheave in place, and the top part of it breaks, then it is literally stuck. So instead I'm going to use a 2BA Allen socket grub screw. This is the final part of the video. I don't want to put this eccentric sheave back on the crankshaft, there's no point because it's going to have to come off in the next episode when I sort out the crankshaft, remove the connecting rod and other things like that. In the next video I'll be refitting and readjusting the crankshaft so that it spins very freely without any play. And it's at that time I will refit the eccentric sheave and the eccentric straps to the pump. I will also give the pump a test run. But that's it for this video, I'd like to say stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.